Hello there! In this video I'm going to review the gear I took to the Cape Wrath Trail back in August. Um, so just real quick I want to make two points. So point number one, the best thing I, I can say about all this gear is that I did finish the trail, my wife finished the trail and I'm going to speak about the gear that helped us uh, finishing the trail. So the second point I want to make is I think the Cape Wrath Trail is quite relentless. It doesn't give you a break. Every single day poses new challenges. Even if you think it's gonna be easy, it won't be easy. There will be something and you will have to struggle that day as well. So I think to maximize the chances that you successfully finish the trail, you better carry as little weight as possible and you better aim at finishing the trail as soon as possible. And finally, I just wanna say, this is the gear that helped me successfully finish the trail. But that doesn't mean that it will do the same for you. You need to find the things that work for you. I pay for every single item here. So I'm gonna say what I like, what I dislike. But just really bear in mind, um, it did work out for me, it may not work out for you. So just remember that. I don't wanna encourage anybody buying anything here unless I truly love the item and then I, I will make the point I would say you should buy this thing it's really awesome so I'm going to start with the clothes socks so I got this thing uh, from icebreaker it's the medium cushion hike and um, anyway just just plain merino wool icebreaker socks I took one of these to the trail no actually I took two pairs for hiking I took one pair for sleeping, but these are the ankle uh, length because um, you save some weight there and I sleep hot, especially in my legs after putting 30, 40k per day. I don't need so much, um, uh, so I'm, I'm pretty hot in my legs. So yeah, these are perfect for me and you save some weight there. So everything counts. I bought the darn tough socks. I think they're made in my beloved country, USA. I say a lot because I lived there in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Next stop, Kendall MIT. I will never forget how people treat me. So it will always be in my heart and, and that's, a, that's the thing. So I feel so bad to say that I try this, I compare them to the Merino and these do better. I think these are Merino wool as well, but with these, my feet uh, sweat a lot compared to these. So I do prefer this. Again, maybe, you know, your, your mileage may vary. Got this thing, remember it was August. Um, it's a hat, never used it. I actually used it once um the first night but i guess it is because i was getting used to the difference in temperature from london to sort of for william ish and but i never used it again i still think this is a good thing to bring because it doesn't weigh that much and you may need it so yeah it's up to you got these trousers i think they're the graph light torque light or something i'll put the name of every item on the screen and the weight so that you know so I love them, they're super comfortable, they're elastic, or elastic enough, very comfortable. It has an elastic band here, so if you lose weight while doing the trail, this has you covered. I don't think you're gonna gain weight, but you know, everything's possible. And what else? Um, yeah, well, when it comes to pockets, it has these that don't have a zip on the side, and this one in the front, it was handy to store my gloves and my head nets because I had to show you now. Yeah, highly recommend They're really super comfortable, excellent for summer hiking. Uh, they do breathe well and I mean, they do what they promise and um, they protected me from the midges. So that's that, very important. If you're wondering, I absolutely love hiking in shorts but because of the midges, I chose uh, long trousers. Go to Merino long sleeve t-shirt, I had in mind I would use this uh, for the um, for sleeping. So uh, I was using this for sleeping. It's specifically 
the Icebreaker Body Fit Basics 200. This is one of those items that I highly recommend. Got this thing, I have no idea about this brand, Crab something, Crack Hoppers. She saw it online and you know, she bought into this thing that it protects you from the midges because it has some nostril, whatever, nos, nosy life or something, whatever. Got it, it's pretty wasted. I don't know if you'll get to see it there, but it got wasted pretty much everywhere after the trail. It did serve me well. The only problem is the midges got through the shirt here, through the holes, and that was horrible. Um, for me, you know, I got bites all over the place, in the bag, everywhere. So that was, so in hindsight, I would bring something like, like this uh, t-shirt I'm wearing to make sure the meat just kind of get through. Other than that, I was highly surprised uh, with this brand because this thing is so well thought through, it's incredible. So first you have here a zip pocket on the front here, a zip pocket. And that was awesome to keep my compass I put it in there when I left London, never used it, not even once. Because um, I had a mini compass here, and I use it every time, all day long, lovely. So there's obviously these pockets here. I would suggest crab hoppers to replace the buttons for one of these um, quickly, like this one, the one of these, I don't know how you call this thing, but... Uh, one of those. Because that makes things easier. Equally, if they were to put a zip here, if you if you design this for midges, then put a zip here because you're gonna need it. Otherwise, the midges go through. So there's that. They also have a pocket inside this pocket, with, which has a zip. And I mean, seriously, like to secure stuff, very well thought through. It has something here to clean your to clean your glasses. I mean. Seriously, they really gave a lot of thought to this and, and highly surprised me. You can hang it from here and there's another uh, another place to hang. I don't know what it is, but it has another one. Like seriously, when you start paying attention to the little details, you can tell that they, they put a lot of thought to this uh, shirt. Also has this ventilation on the back here. So seriously, this is a very nice um, uh, shirt. So one of these things, uh, another a uh, little um, attention to the detail they pay is that you can roll out your sleeve and then it has this sort of strap that you can uh, put it on the bottom here to hold your thing, your sleeve. Like really, in every corner the, the t-shirt has some nice details. This pocket came very handy to put my emergency head torch. Uh, would I take it again? If they were to put a zip here, then yes, otherwise no, because the meat just like go through and they destroy me, so no. So yeah, I got this uh, from Icebreaker briefs, uh, because I just got some weight there as well, and they work fantastically well, so I'm very happy with them. These are recommended too. Got this from a different brand, it's Calida, it's a Swiss brand, and I chose this because they're pretty warm, but then they weighed 55 grams. So this is only for sleeping. So it was it was great. Comfortable and lightweight and warm. Now, this is my puffy. This one is the Rub Microlite Summit. I think pretty much it's like the Microlite, but it has a few features that separate it from the normal version. Like this in the cup to keep the heat. It has a sort of a, I don't know, like an elastic here to secure the, the hoodie on your head if you're not wearing a helmet. The hoodie is big, again, it's, it's always the same with the wrap jackets. I think they're designed for you to wear a helmet and it's, it's always a bit too big. I so much prefer Montaigne when it comes to the design of the hoodies compared to wrap. But other than that, I hardly got to use the jacket. I think I used it I, just a few times. This is a part of my sleeping system. So what I mean by that is I took a quilt, I'm just gonna show you real quick. This is a quilt. This quilt weighs uh, 380 grams. I kept it in the C2 Summit bag, 45 grams. And this is fully waterproof. And it really saved me because my backpack, which I'll speak about now, is also waterproof. But um, at some point on day one, it just pulled down on us so badly 
that I got some some uh, water on the bottom of the backpack. That that was where the quilt was. Uh, so it was perfectly dry when I took it out of this bag. So yeah, super super uh, great choice to bring something truly waterproof to protect those things that you truly need, meaning your sleeping bag. Period. So this is my quilt. I'll speak about it now. But just to say, this is a full system. Because if I get cold, I put on my puffy. So I don't want to carry a much bigger sleeping bag, which I have, if, if I'm also going to be carrying a puffy jacket, I mean, what's the point? I have a merino long sleeve t-shirt as well. I have a hat. Why would I want to carry, you know, you don't want items that overlap. So if, if you want to enjoy the trail, just carry less weight and you enjoy more, that's simple as that. So yeah, going back to the puffy, it compresses fine. It does the job well. It's all right. I guess everyone knows Rab. That's good. The guys at Rab at some point, I'm going to contact them and see if they send me something, you know, because I'm always giving them free sponsorship here. But yeah, I'm actually happy with, with this jacket. I really like it. It looks good. Awesome. So yeah, I have other, uh, I don't know how many more jackets. I have the Neutrino Pro. I have the um, Positron. So yeah, even if Rav wants to sponsor me, I, I don't think there's anything I need from them. So <laughs> anyway, that's that. Good jacket, yeah. My wife also had a Rav Electron whatever, and she was happy with it as well. Um, I gave it to her as a birthday present, by the way. So these, I guess everyone knows my jacket by now from the North Face. It's awesome, 380 grams. This thing can take all the rain that Scotland has for it. It's been tested twice in my Southern Upland Way video and now also here. And really, really fantastic. It looks brand new after having used it for the Southern Upland Way and other Cape Wrath. It's really, really good jacket and I would buy it again, like for sure. I paid 100 pounds, 120 pounds max, I think. I got it an offer, I'm super happy with it. So anything similar to this, fantastic. Whoa. The Lawrence of Arabia cap. This is great. You can detach this thing, but um, I absolutely loved the fact that it protects me from the sun and the back and the sides, so for the ears and the neck. So it's really great. Um, I really, really like this thing. You can also adjust when it's windy. You can, oh man, I think I did something wrong here. Yeah. So you can do this thing, adjust here. And so if it's windy, it keeps the thing here. And if it's not, you can open it and allow for airflow. Um, I noticed, um, I, I got a little bit hot because of these flaps, but the moment you allow for airflow like this, then it's fine. And the level of protection is really, truly really fantastic. And again, if it's raining or there's a wind blowing on your face and you just adjust it like this, it really protects you, I loved it. I use it a lot combined with my mosquito, I mean, mitches, which is mitches. You know, I take back the mosquito thing. It has nothing to do with mosquitoes. With mos mosquitoes. I use it a lot like this, so it put the net away from your eyes. So it's really great in that regard. Same for the rain. If it's raining and you're wearing this and then you put your hoodie from the rain jacket, this protects you a bit from this lateral rain and all. It's, I really, really like it. Also, you don't get the wet feeling of the hoodie right on your face. This, this is a really, really brilliant piece of kit. This is one of these things I highly recommend for everybody. It's, it's really awesome. Whoa. Now we have my wife present for my birthday. If you watch my video, you'll see it. These gloves. When she bought them, I thought, oh, man, I, see I didn't tell her, but I just thought, oh, who needs sun gloves? This is stupid. Mitch's gloves. These are Mitch's gloves. Fantastic. They also help me because usually I, I just hike with a one single trekking pole. So usually I switch hands. But whenever I, I see like some uh, more demanding or challenging terrain, I feel more comfortable holding the trekking pole on my right hand because I'm a right-handed person. So in the Kevra Trail, I found myself using my right hand 80% of the time, so to say, 70%. 
for that, you know, because of that, actually, I started getting a bit of a blister here. So the moment I got my gloves, it was great. It also helped me in that regard. So this, these are my neoprene socks. This pair weighs 100 grams, 104. This is fantastic. Uh, when it comes to river crossing, this is, this is amazing. I never used it for that. This is my camp shoes. I just wanted something that I could wear if I'm like while camping or if I was to be in a bothy. Because I remember from the SUW, bothies do get so, so cold. So this thing isolates. If you get it soaking wet, you will still have warm feet. I also brought them in case I needed to, to heat up my feet while trekking. So you just put this on instead of your socks, you're good to go, at least I was. So this is a multifunctional item. It replaces your camp shoes. There's always like, shall I bring camp shoes? Shall I not bring them? Bring this, 100 grams. You can use it for that. You can use it for your river crossing because it has pretty good grip because of this sort of um, outsole. It has grip to it. You can use it for hiking. If you get wet feet and you, I don't know, your feet get too cold, you can also use it for that. I mean, and then you can use it, I don't know, for everything. Um yeah, this is, this is pretty awesome. One of my most recommended items, actually. So, these gaiters from Montaigne. Um, yeah, well, one of them, this string broke. The string that attaches to the outsole of your shoes. This one is almost broken too. There's just a few strings there that survived the trail. But they do supply this with, I think it's two extra strings. And I'm pretty certain if you just try mon to maintain, and guys, I need more strings. I'm sure that I just send you a couple. I haven't done it myself, but I want to believe they're awesome enough to do that. I may test it. Um, but yeah, only one broke, this one. Um, other than that, it did the job, which is keeping the debris out. It's not that I care that, you know, my feet wouldn't be wet, that wouldn't happen. It would always be wet. I embraced the wet feet philosophy, no problem. It was relieving actually, because we got some hot days. So it was perfect to, to get my feet wet constantly, because I think it was good for two reasons. One, to cool down my feet, literally. And it was pleasant. But two, I think, you know, sometimes when you get swollen feet or, you know, you, your muscles are, I don't know, you, you're tired and you put your feet in cold water or um, you take a cold shower, well, it has this effect on you. So my feet were cold and I think it did help me. So it was awesome. Yeah, I'm pretty optimistic always, <laughs> but you get the point. So yeah, you can absolutely buy this. The weight, uh, I don't remember, but pretty little. Like, yeah, they did the job very well. I'm very happy and I would take this again for sure. This is my oven dressers net. So you just compress them here, it's pretty awesome. And these are the oven trousers, they're fantastic from Bear House. They're super, uh, well, super, they're pretty cheap, I would say, for what they offer. And I absolutely love them. They can take all the rain and more that Scotland has for them. So in that regard, they're really, really nice. And they pack pretty, pretty small. So, I don't know, it's my hand right next to it. And... They're really great. They're comfortable. They're easy to put on whether you're wearing boots or just try running shoes as I did. The zip, you have a zip all the way down. And, and then you also have this thing here. So you can do the double zip down here, up here. So you have all the air coming in. So you don't have to be putting the other trousers on and off all the freaking time when there's this intermittent rain. So I think that's a great feature for those silly rainy days. And yeah, the packs more. I used it quite a bit in the first uh, three, four days. And it really can take a lot of rain. And you love them. They're, they're comfortable, great. And 760, 70 pounds max from Berghaus. I had no idea this is the first Berghaus pro uh, product I ever bought. And I'm super happy. So this highly recommended for the Scottish hikes. So we have this sitting pack from Expert. This is great. I highly recommend this thing. It's one of these overrated items. It weighs nothing, like 30 grams max. And we used it constantly. 
it, it's just super nice. You don't have to sit, you know, in Scotland, for the most part, everything is wet, it's, it's um, muddy and whatnot. Use your pad, you'll be happy. If you were to use a bothy, um, you know, the, the floor of the bothy uh, gets really cold, thin, it's isolating, you put your feet here and you're happy. Now, if you're a woman, you know, cold, and bladder infections, they sort of go hand in hand, apparently. You want this thing? You use one, you love it. Eight pounds, you don't get your bladder infection, and so you're a happy camper. So, seriously, um, get one of these, you squeeze it anywhere, you use it like for so many things, you can even use it at home if you want. You know what I mean. Um, this is a useful, fully underrated item, and I'm gonna take it to every single hike because I really loved it. And seriously, for eight pounds, less than eight pounds, this is like, there's no reason not to bring one. The sleeping system, part of it, this uh, Neo x Lite, whatever the name was, Thermal Rest. And so my wife had the older version that packs like this. We both removed this um, case or um, sack, stuff sack, whatever. We removed it because it's extra weight that you don't need. So that's that. This is a new version, the valve changes, it's different, uh, so this valve, let's see if this focuses. Uh, this valve, it's just larger, so when you blow on it, it's like a, and just one go, to show you. And that's it, the other one is more like this. So, the other one, I think is better because with this one, it can make you a bit like faint, you know? So, there are a bit noisy people complain. I'm, I'm pretty picky when it comes to noise and um, I didn't, it didn't bother me at all. So, and I didn't, my wife moving or not, it just never bothered me. But people do complain about this, that they're noisy. I don't know. This is super comfortable and yeah, for sure I would take it. And I will always take this, it's, it's just very nice. It's a bit annoying to me having to blow it in the, at night and then deflate it in the morning. But other than that, and when it comes to packing, I just put it in the bottom just like this. So I got these two um, Mitch's head nets. This one, when you are static. This one from Sea to Summit, when you're moving, when you're hiking. So this 10 grams, this is like 20, I think, maybe 25, I don't remember. Of course, I, I remove all this such thing because you don't need it. I just put it in the pocket and you, wanna, you want to have them handy. So with this, you don't see much. That's why you want this one. So if you sit down, you use this. If you're moving, you use that. You don't see much, you see everything. This one protects you fully from the midges. This one does not. But if you're moving, even if you go slowly, this one does a very decent job. So I recommend having the two of them actually. Like a 100% recommendation. If you go July, August, you're gonna have Mitch's. Bring the two of them, thank me later. The backpacks. So this is funny, it just went from, I was super annoyed with it and I dislike it a lot, from I absolutely love it, why? Today's my fifth day. I'm fine, you know, I've been taking all the pain and all, and today I'm feeling good, actually. I'm, I mean, I have pain on my shoulders, but that's because of the backpack. It's not doing the job well. When I did the SUW, I, I thought I was very smart, because this backpack is um, 1170 grams. Uh, so I thought I was cutting one kilo compared to a normal old school backpack. And I thought I was super smart. Wrong, why? If you want an ultralight backpack, you better go ultralight as well. So once I got that thing right in the Cape Wrath Trail, this served me so well because I was carrying 12 kilos. In the SUW, I carried 20 with empty bottles of water. So now I'm carrying 12 and this did the job so yeah, phenomenally. That's the word, like fantastic, really Why? This is just so much more comfortable than any other backpack I have tried on. You just feel so free, your shoulder movement. I love this thing. 
when it comes to all that. It has all the features you want. You can adjust it here for your bag. It's pretty easy to adjust. The padding here is sufficient for me and the uh, uh, head straps to me is it's awesome. It's actually a good quality. You won't believe it. The padding here, fantastic. Side pocket, side pocket. It has, it's a bit elastic so you can fit objects there that are a bit like big. I like that it has this thing here. It's like, it has a Velcro. And so what this does is instead of having the remaining sort of a strap hanging, you can roll it up and secure it. And so you don't have to, you know, the excess is not hanging and moving. That's good because if it's windy, you know, it may hit you on the face. It happened to me actually. Then what else? So you can secure things with this on the top. So that's pretty handy for maybe putting uh, one of these uh, non-inflatable uh, pads. I don't, I don't remember the name. And it has two straps, one on each side, and you can secure objects here. So it goes like a, a zigzag pattern or maybe like this. And so it's independent one to the other. So you can secure stuff here. Super, super handy. You can just I, I take off my cap, put it here, clip it. There's a clip here on the top and it's secure. Um, uh, you can put your tracking pole here. If you're carrying an umbrella, you can also put the umbrella. It's just super handy. So I love the backpack in every way. It weighs little. It carry up to 15 kilos. Um, 15 kilos would be the limit. Y you're good to go with 15 kilos, but don't put 16. Otherwise, you start feeling, you know, that this is like it's exceeding the, the limit. It can carry comfortably. With 12 kilos, I just forgot I was wearing a backpack. Yeah, I just focus on enjoying the trail. It's lovely. So highly recommend the backpack. That's a pocket inside. And a feature that I absolutely love is waterproof, actually. It can take a lot of rain. So the first day I put down on us so badly, and this thing took almost all of it. I would say 85% of the rain, it, it took it. Only my, my quilt got a bit wet. So I was very happy with my waterproof bag. But other than that, like everything else was dry. So bone dry actually. So absolutely fantastic. And I would say overrated backpack in the ultralight community. The maps, yeah, sure. You need your maps, they're handy. So let's move on to the head torch. It comes here in this little case. I obviously didn't bring this. This is my head torch, I put it here on the shirt on the side pocket or the arm pocket whatever this is um it's an emergency head torch it's fantastic because it's very comfy you can adjust it like to whichever angle even sideways so that's great and this is not gonna do it if you're hacking at night and you're like moving you no but if you are in a tent or if you just sit down somewhere it's perfect it weighs nothing i think it's 20 grams so think about it it has plenty of light and it has a uh, red light as well and a strop function so and this thing this is a red light because i have it in red normal and now let me let me blow you so it's fantastic and trust me you will never need this second thing you just with this you're good to go and then there's the strop function also it's really like awesome you can also lock the selector so that you don't switch it on in your pocket like by mistake great you can adjust it you can also seriously what a piece of kit i paid 15 pounds i think or less the weight is fantastic it does everything any other head torch does but it just weighs so much less so this is great that's one of those highly recommended items the compass, yeah, I was very happy with it. I just never used it, not once, because I have the mini version here on my wrist, so it's super handy. You just look, you know, it does the job, you know? And so, would I take this again? It's around 50 grams, I think. Well, it's a tough call, you know, because if you need your compass, you gotta have it. But, you know, I had this one here, I had the one on the phone, so I'm not too sure. I th it's hard for me to say, but I may, you know, this may stay home next time. And my uh, tactical knife, I really love this knife, it's awesome. You can deploy it with just one hand and it has a clip and this is great. It's, it's sturdy, it's dependable and this is not gonna break and yes, yeah, it's, it's awesome. So yeah, 140 grams I think. This is an awesome knife. 
at this uh, C2 Summit map case, I love this thing. It's better as a completely waterproof and all that thing. Uh, it's just very nice because you just hang it and you look and I don't know, I enjoy doing that. Um, the only thing is sometimes, it's, it's like one of these zips and bags, if it's cold, boy, this thing gets so, so hard to open. It's incredible. I have to use my teeth and, and just fight it, use a knife. Seriously, other than that, if it's not super freezing cold like it was for me in the SUW, it's, uh, it's lovely. I really, really like this thing. I would recommend it. This, someone asked me on Facebook, what do you want this for? Well, it's for, for the steaks. So, uh, pay five pounds, I think. It's 180 grams, a bit less. It does the job when, so especially first, I'm not wearing boots. So, I cannot like pu push down the, the steaks with my boots. I have three running shoes. Second, uh, I just like using this instead of my boots. Third, most importantly, if there is a rigid surface, like it was the case for us when we camp uh, on a road. Where are you? On the middle of a road. <laughs> it's not true. It's true? You need this thing, otherwise, I don't know how you're going to put your stakes unless you use stones. We could have used stones, we just didn't find so many around. So. And I like to have a hammer. I don't know, it may come handy at some point, so yeah. This thing, your trowel, 55 grams of thing, is um, it's great. It, it way, I mean, it, it, it's super comfortable. You, you have other that are more lightweight, but this thing is easy to use. And if you do use it, eventually, you'll like this one more. So, um, so I highly recommend this thing, seriously. Cooking system, we have this ultralight ever new pot this weights i think 125 grams and by the way this the cozy pod or pot cozy i don't know that my wife made for the thing and it has this thing so you, you put it on the floor on top of this and then you cover it so this is great and then when you pack it you just put the thing in there and the whole thing goes back in so um because she had food, she had dehydrated herself at home. She bought a dehydrated machine and the German stuff. Most of you won't, won't understand that. <laughs> it's German stuff. So anyway, um, now I have to say the food was fantastic. Imagine you tired at the end of the day and then you have a stew. Uh, it's incredible, really. Fantastic. Super healthy, super tasty, like amazing. So anyway, for that, you just add water to the dehydrated food and then you put it in a coffee pot and just wait 15 minutes and you're good to go. So yeah, that's this. Now, the ultralight thing is really great. I'll show you now. This is the bowl, C2 Summit. This is one of these highly recommended stuff. And yeah, you just pack it like this and it fits inside the, the pot, like this, inside. So it's awesome when it comes to organizing your gear. I really recommend this thing. The base of the bottom is very rigid, so you can cut, I've done it with my knife, you can cut here your stuff, your cheese or whatever you bring, and so it's like a cutting board, so to say. And yeah, this is great. Um, yeah, I would recommend it. This, I think it's from Light My Fire. It's a spork, and yeah, 19 grams, I think. Awesome thing, yeah, fantastic. Just bear in mind, if you buy one of those dehydrated meals that are too long, you, you may need something longer than this. But if you're not buying that, this is great. Lightweight, titanium cup, uh, 300 milliliters, snow peak. I really like it. Portable. Um, forgot the name for this now, but you know, get the point. So yeah, I love this thing. Fantastic. I even like to drink from this. I don't know why. I use it at home often, so it's gonna stay here. Um, then I have the famous MSR Pocket Rocket. The one thing to say about this, apart from the fact that you need to be more careful when it comes to the stability of the whole thing, this igniter, or whatever you call it, to, to fire up the thing, worked every single bloody time. At the first time that I press it, it's incredible. So, 
fantastic. I also took some matches, but just that, you know, very efficient, very good. I'm super impressed. And yeah, then just the pot. Uh, well, it has the handlers. Yeah, that's a, that was a word, the handlers. So, and then the fold cap as well. Inside here, I put the pocket rocket thing. So, and the matches, everything like this packed. And I don't know what else I put here, but yeah, it's pretty fantastic. You can put everything there. So yeah. Oh yeah, the this bowl fits here too. So it's great. And then you can close it. And here you go. It's really nice. Alright guys, I was about to forget this thing. My wife reminded me of it. We this use it. Uh, did the job great. Everyone was happy with it, and that's it. That's all I wanted to say about this thing. This thing, two liters from Evernew. I think you shouldn't buy the other one. I read the reviews, and you better invest in this one. Uh, this is great. I really, really liked it. Foldable bottle of water. Just pour it like this. Put it on the side of the pack where, where you have your other bottle of water. It's fantastic because when you need water, especially for two people, but maybe for one too. You need your water, uh, you just refill this thing. It's hard to collect water with this thing. It, it tends not to fill. But what I did is just collecting the water with my other bottle, which by the way was a plastic bottle from, from a smoothie. So it has a larger opening and it, it just did greatly. Fantastic bottle, weights nothing. And because as you know from my other gear review, I ditched my Nalgene bottles because one liter bottle weighs 170 180 grams. So that's crazy So yeah, I'm super happy with it. I will always carry this with me. It's just fantastic Speaking of water, you know, if you go to Scotland, why would you want to carry water in your pack? I kept meeting people that all were carrying water with them. I mean seriously Why would you want to carry water for a freaking emergency man? You fall in us water you, you you little fall on your feet and you fall on a paddle so seriously, the last thing that's gonna kill you in Scotland is a lack of water. I mean, if, even if in the last resort you fall, you, you break your neck and you're like this, it's gonna pour on your face and you will still drink water. Why would you carry an extra kilo or two? So get your map, check the tracks. Yeah, okay, I have 27 rivers in the next 100 meters. So I will drink in the number 27 river. So you stop there, you come up, you keep going and then you look and say, okay, you know, I just coming up so I can last an hour and a half without water. So an hour and a half means that here in the river number, three million and one, I will drink again. So you just plan your, no, like seriously, I'm making fun of this thing. I just, why would you want to carry extra weight if, if there's a million rivers, streams and water falls on you from every angle? There's, you can't escape from water in Scotland. It's really unnecessary, just think about it. If you like to carry your water, by all means, carry the, the bloody water. I'm just giving an advice, so don't get mad at me. My wife took uh, what I call a cocoon. I don't know what they call it, like uh, liners, a sleeping bag liner. It's a cocoon, it's clear. Even the material is uh, silk. Cocoon, silk, get the point. So yeah, she got the thing, she was very happy. I didn't, um, so yeah, I was happy I didn't too. This can apparently add some two, three degrees to your sleeping system. So maybe, maybe convenient uh, if you account for the weight. She was happy with it. Um, so yeah, just to say she did it. She also had a pillow. She bought it on Amazon for very little money as well. I put it on the screen. I don't remember the name. This is still recording. Man, I'm stressed because there's so much, so much gear and I, I don't want to bother you here for three hours. So yeah, she was very happy. I was using my puffy, just wrap it into the hoodie, into the own hoodie of the puffy. And that was my uh, pillow. Actually, it was my wife uh, puffy. I don't know why I started taking her puffy as my pillow. Go figure. My wife got this Mitch's thing. Um, I just don't like the feeling. It gets sticky. It's not very nice, especially if, if you're going to be sweating a bit and mixes. But what I found out when I did use it, I think it was once on my hands, here, I could see all the midges here stick to my hand all dead. Um, to me, the best thing against the midges is freaking not being there, really. Just don't be there, and then you don't have to worry about what to put on yourself for the midges and whatnot. 
If you absolutely have to be there just because you live there and you want to do a picnic, yeah, get the hell out of this thing and you know put it everywhere inside your eyes, in your mouth, do everything with this thing. And seriously, it's midges are horrible. All right, Miley Kai trekking pole. Uh, so at the one, one of those items you absolutely want to bring uh, on the trail, a uh, trekking pole. Seriously, you do need this thing. It's, it, even if you don't use it as a trekking pole, you want it as an extension to your hand and you can touch. Okay, well, what is this bug doing or well, what am I gonna get here? You can step there, step on the center. It's fine. Fine, it's alright. You want this thing, trust me, just get it. Even if you don't believe in them, put it on your pack, thank me later. Seriously, get one. Toilet paper, this uh, biodegradable, whatever you pronounce that. And yeah, I take this thing for peace of mind. I like this thing, so yeah. So, this, this wipes. I count the days that I'm going to be on the trail and I add a few more. So let's say I'm on the trail for 20 days. So I'm going to take 25 of these and I leave the rest at home so that I save weight. When the 25 wipes are here, 150 grams, 180 grams. I don't use them for number two. I use one wipe every single day, clean my underarm, clean down there, clean my feet. I'm good to go. Put it in a zip bag, close it dispose it whenever I have the chance. My wife still got this. She got like, I told her, I said, man, seriously, like wilderness, man. I just told her, I said, these are great. Don't buy these, but she still, you know, she just couldn't help it and bought this thing, fine. She ended up using these, why? Because they're pretty good, so, okay. And last item, my wife said, fully underrated item for females. Check it out. So this closes, I don't know how you close this, never use it. There you go. So it's a brush. Open, has a mirror. The mirror can be handy if, if you, you know, for ticks and all, you, you may want to use the mirror in certain part of your body that you don't have access to that mirror. Good stuff. And it deploys. Do your thing. And when you're good to go, you close and on and folding and she loved the thing. She said this is one of the most underrated things. Another underrated object, this thing. So my wife got this towel. There it is. Now, especially for the boys, I guess, uh, although obviously you can use it as a woman if you like. So you can dry yourself with this thing. It does a great job. Um, you know, in our case, Whenever we slept in a hotel, there were towels there, so actually you don't need any. But I take this for the tent. Let's say that, you know, this thing happens. All night long, no rain. And then you say, okay, I'm going to get going. Boom, you get your one minute rain. Torrential one minute rain. So now the, the bloody tent is completely wet and all. You have this thing, dry quickly, squeeze the thing, boom. You get the thing done super quickly. This weights nothing, maybe 10 grams, I think. And it does a fantastic job at doing that. Let's say you, I don't know, it's been torrential rain all day long. You get into your tent and you create some few puddles. You also have this, you wipe your tent, you're good to go. You can clean objects. I mean, you can use it for a lot of things. Just get the picture, be creative and bring one next time. My wife got an umbrella for two reasons. Against the sun, and seriously, um, we never expected any sun, but we got quite a bit of it. So against the sun is awesome. But she got it for the rain. You just find a way to attach it to your backpack before you're on the trail. You do that at home. Put on the backpack, get the umbrella, figure out an easy way for you to do it. Because I had to do it every single time for my wife. It was pretty easy for me to do, so no problem. And she was happy. So that's a plus there, guys. And you know, there was this scooter once said, um, happy wife, easy life. And I was like, I think there's something went right about that. 
there's that. So now seriously, the umbrella, she's pretty happy with it. She didn't bring this cover, but yeah, I'll put the name on the, on the screen and yeah, she loved it. It really protected her and believe it or not, this thing took quite a bit of wind happily. So it's not like your normal city umbrella. The time she used it, obviously it wasn't super windy, so it did the job perfectly well. So yeah, it's a good addition. Oh boy, oh man, I thought I was done. Trail running shoes, this Salomon XA Pro 3D. So these are the ones my wife took and she's very, very happy with it. Why did she choose this model? So I did my research and I recommended her like this La Sportiva Jacal, La Sportiva Akasha, these, the ones I used, the Saucony Exodus 10. She liked this for a number of reasons. Uh, firstly, it fell right on her feet. So that's that, very important. Secondly, these offer more protection than all the others I have mentioned. So you have your toe, um, box protection here, pretty, pretty nice and sturdy. And she did hit her toes a couple of times and she was very happy she had this. And she also told me I'm so happy I didn't choose other trail running shoes over this, like my Saucony, because this really protects her, her toes. She walked on this extensively here in London before taking them to the trail. They did the trick for her, she was pretty happy. So, so yeah, she loved them, she never got blisters and except for here and there a little bit in, in between of the toes I think but, but nothing major or anything nothing that bothered her even so it was all good all fine and she's very happy she never slipped she loved the outsole even though the lugs are, are not very long or anything but she was very happy with the grip and what else to say they just get very dirty in comparison to my socken issues and also the, when they get wet, which is every day of your life in Scotland, and they, they, they take a lot longer to dry off. Make sure every single night, take off the insoles. It will help dry them out and dry the shoe as well. So that's good to know and do. And this has a fast lacing system, which I personally really, really like. I actually love these shoes. It's just that uh, they don't do well with my right foot. I have a bit of a problem with it. Cushioning, uh, non-existent in the forefoot and just the slightest on the back. My wife loved it, had no problem. And again, she she tried shoes that had a lot of cushioning like mine. And she just said, I just love this thing. I love the feeling. I don't want any of the cushioning, blah, blah, blah. So for the most part, in the Kevrath Trail, you're not gonna walk on or like tarmac or something like that. At most, if you're lucky, you get these four by four tracks and for those you may want to have some cushioning, I certainly do. So yeah, they're not very flexible. Then they they get like tough. The more from here onwards, it just it's not gonna flex much. But yeah, some flexibility there if you want it. And what else to say? Very stable. She was very happy with them. So. Yeah, she would certainly recommend them, you know? So, but just remember everyone has a different foot. So this is my Saucony Exodus 10. This is absolutely fantastic trail running shoes. So these have excellent grip in general. River crossing on them is great. This model also dry faster than this uh, from my wife. They dry faster. The insole dries incredibly faster than my wife's uh, the Salomon insole. And so you would want to buy these shoes if you want a lot of cushioning. It's, it's firm cushioning, but not as firm as the models from La Sportiva. So you get a little bit of fluffy thing, but it's very stable shoe 
and I trusted it 100% and all the type of terrains I found in the Kebrak Trail. And so in the forefoot, you have quite a bit of cushioning, which was crucial to me. And the back, you also have cushioning, but it's not like Mizuno, I have that you have like something super fluffy in the back. No, it's a firm ride, but when you need it, you feel the fluffiness of the cushioning, and it's awesome. So, for the 4x4 tracks, for the bit of road you may end up walking, um, if you take the Olapool alternate, then you have some few, like maybe 20 kilometers of a uh, hard surface, uh, almost tarmac. Some, some of those kilometers are gonna be tarmac. You love the cushioning. My wife didn't give a damn about this cushioning. She was completely fine. So, you know, everyone's different. But if you're looking for a shoe that has a lot of cushioning, it's still responsive. Fantastic outsole and grip in all different terrain. And the flexibility, well, you get a picture. It dries off um, as you walk relatively quickly and it certainly drains all the excess of water you're not going to be walking like, like a paddle inside no like literally you, know, you take like one minute walk it has drained all the excess of water and yes you, you have a wet uh, running shoe but it's not like soaking wet by any means and then they dry they're like overnight i never got them in the morning to to be dry i never got them dry they were always sort of wettish and humid but um, they weren't soaking wet and so I'm super happy with them like I highly recommend them uh, Fantastic trail running shoes. I don't know what else to say about them. Oh, yeah the, the, They're roomy inside so they allow your, your feet to natural swell over the miles and over the day I got them wet and I walked in London for 10-15 kilometers for like five six days And I was hundred percent sure I was completely fine with it. I wasn't gonna get blisters and nothing so then I took them on the trail and it was 100% success. They served me so freaking well that I'm, bring them, I'm bringing them back in October because in October I'm doing the Kefrath Trail again. I'm going to bring this thing again because they're fantastic to me. Maybe you put them on and then it's horrible to you. I'm not too sure what faults to find. You have things here to attach your gaiters also in the middle. This is something highly recommended. We don't miss our boots anymore. Like my wife used to hiking, hiking boots too, and she's never going back to them. I'm not going back to them. So I had a pair of heavy boots that I used to for hiking in the past. I completely ditched them, but I took them to the Southern Upland Way and I had used them uh, previously in Switzerland with hot weather and they served me very well and never got a blister, not even a, a faint of it, nothing. Went to Scotland, did the Southern Upland Way back in March, and boy, I got the horrible, the most horrible and horrendous and terrible blisters I've ever had in my life. You know, I didn't know how the boots would perform when wet, all day long wet, one day after the other wet, a Scottish wet. There's something I should have known, that was a beginner's mistake. The only, the only thing I still have to try is trail running shoes when it's super cold in Scotland and the snow and everything. I haven't tried that, so I don't know. Will that do the, you know, will I miss my boots then? Will my feet freeze to death or something? And I'll die. I need to try that. Now, you have your trail running shoes. See a river, cruise through. You don't care. You just go through the river the only thing you care is I don't want to fall in the river. That's it. Boy, the stones in the rivers, they're super slippery. You also don't have to consider, oh, shall I stop now and take my river crossing specific shoes and then one minute later, take them off, put the boots in. I personally consider an advantage of trail running shoes. You just cruise through whatever the, the trail is throwing at you you don't care and I think it's a very strong advantage because there's a lot of other things you need to worry about so this is one you don't so that's that oh yeah as for the tent uh, my tent is an MSR access 2 and I'm super happy with the tent it served me very very well while doing the SUW back in March 
and it really served us very well now, now it's the two of us. So, in, so back in March, I, I want to say, since it was almost winter conditions, you have more gear. So it's, it's pretty good that you have extra space for you, to put your gear around you. And now my wife joined me and so we, we have enough space for us and we both have a lot of space to, to put more than the basic around us and it was perfectly fine and we were comfortable, both of us. Mind you, it's not that you have tons of space when it comes to the width of the tent. I think it's 160 centimeters. But, you know, since you want to cut weight too, it, it was perfect. Like, I think it's a very decent uh, room for two people, especially if you're a couple. And I, I would sleep there besides a friend as well. It, it was okay, you know. So there's that. Very robust tent, it can take uh, strong winds, it can take very heavy rain, like really sustain heavy rain and it never um, soak through or anything. When it comes to condensation in August, it was non-existent, like zero, even though it was two people now breathing, zero. So you don't have to worry about that. Even camping right next to the freaking river, zero condensation. Back in March, I didn't have condensation, just a, a bit like, for example, the, but you know, I was, I was pitching in a swamp, but anyway, the the feet of my sleeping bag got a bit wet once, and so the next night and onwards, I just put the 35 liters dry bag that I have, and I just put it on over the sleeping bag, and that was it. But you know these condensation issues that people have like sort of dripping on, on their face not even remotely close to that like so i would say i would say zero condensation problems so it's an excellent tent the only thing is the weight that you're gonna carry 1.8 kilos with everything included there's one thing the msr tent has um, it pitches inner first i came up with a workaround so that um, i could put the rain fly when it's raining first and only then put the inner tent. But it's cumbersome, it's annoying, it's not ideal. But yeah, if it's pulling down big time, I always do that. And it's a workaround and it works. And I make sure I can set up the tent dry on the inside. My MSR, you know, I've tested, I, I trust the tent when it comes to strong winds and heavy rain and all. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. But just, it's this thing that you have to pitch the inner first. It's, it's a bit annoying. And the, the weight. I think it's, it's a highly recommendable tent. I have a bonus material here. My wife just reminded me what I was missing here. I don't know what I would do without her. So, yeah. I did bring a, a ground sheet. I just got it in Amazon, five pounds. You can buy it cheaper, but you know, I just got it um, last minute. And I cut it to, to fit the, the inner tent only, not the vestibules. Fantastic. Really, one of the most recommended thing to do, bring your ground sheet. Number two, about the umbrella. She just wanted to say that she was a lot cooler with the protection of the umbrella. So they asked that. Then there's the wallet. Yeah, I was having one of these zip bags, but the small version, I think it's each like 10 grams. So I put two of them to store my the bit of cash I got and my my debit card and whatnot, you know, and I just put it here. But just to say, I didn't bring a wallet. Another thing is, we did take these ticks vaccinations. So you need to allow yourself some time because from the first to the second, it took like, I think it was 15 days. And we never got the third one and final one done because we didn't have time. So there's that. You take vaccination, do the thing. I know it's annoying. I wouldn't have done it myself, but I have my wife to push me. Yes, you're gonna do it. I did it. I'm very happy I did. Uh, we never saw a tick, but I know some people who did, and you know, you really want to have the vaccine because you can get a nasty sickness otherwise. So it's just one of the things that putting little effort can give you a massive reward. I think it's worth it. And then I think it's for a lifetime or so, so yeah, that's that. And the gators, 
the gators, I forgot to say that yes, um, not only for the debris, but for the ticks, it also keeps them at bay. I hope you like my BB review. I know I talk like as fast as I can speak in freaking English, which is not my first language. And but the reason why is that there's so much gear, and I don't want to hold you there like listen to this gear review forever. So I try to speed up. And so now I can relax. I just want to say goodbye to you in a nice and pleasant and calm way because boy, I, I'm, I'm, I was cruising through my gear review the way I was cruising through the Kebra thread. <laughs> so yeah, I wanted to say if you like the video, just destroy your mouse, giving the thumb up and clicking there, uh, thumb up to this guy. So I, I just wanted to thank you all for the, like really, the, um, the just loving comments, you know, like uh, it meant a lot to me. I just got so much love and comments and feedback and all. It was really, really encouraging because, you know, I just do this this as a hobby. So um, thank you so much, guys. So I really hope um, you enjoyed this review. I tried to do the best I could. And if you have a comment, put it uh, down below in the comment section. And I think, yeah, that's about it. Um, thank you for so much for watching.